From what you say, Saunders, there's no doubt at all that the Healy XK20 Mini Computer was stolen by Dreisenberg agents. Oh dear, I'm awfully sorry. The MG3, it's just been facelifted for 2019. But is it any good? Should you care? Why, let's find out, shall we? MG, let... Oh. How am I just review one of these? Oh, of course, this is the brand new model. Wonderful. Right, MG, let's go. So, welcome once again to an episode of Two Jacket Reviews. Today, I'm near Godston in Surrey um, with Mr. Matt Richardson from uh, Furious Driving, who is behind the camera. Today, we're in a 2019 MG3 1.5 exclusive, which has been provided by MG Motor UK. I'm very grateful for them to uh, give us this car to film today. So, thanks, MG. Fem G? So, a lot of you will probably wonder why I'm bothering to film another MG3, having reviewed my wife's car on my channel last September. Well, this is a facelifted car. The car was um, actually facelifted in about August last year, and one of my uh, regular viewers suggested I get hold of one of these and point the differences out between the two. And so, yeah, there are many differences. The interior is virtually completely new, the front end is completely new, the rear end is completely new. There's a new gear lever in here, there's um, a new infotainment system in here. This car's got a reversing camera now, the top spec one. Um, the trims have been rejigged, the seats are all new. Um, it's a very comprehensive update, but there is one thing that actually remains the same, and this may be a problem for some of you. The one thing that is carried over from the previous car that you'll notice most of all when driving this is the engine. It's still the same 1.5 litre four cylinder engine. It's got nothing to do with any previous MG Rover product, but it is slightly old fashioned engineering. There's no turbo and um, there is variable valve timing, but it doesn't really make any difference. So it still generates 105 horsepower and you'll expect 0 to 60 in about 10.5 seconds. The car really noticeable for the, the, the lack of low down torque compared with a turbocharged engine, say in something like my set Toledo 1.0 TSI. I mean, that's fine for town use and, um, you know, on a motorway, you just put it in fifth gear and leave it. But it's just when you drive other cars that you notice that lack of urge lower down the rev range. Mind you though, this car in this top spec trim only costs £12,800 with all these extra features they've added on it. And that's not a lot of money, especially considering you get a standard seven year warranty on all MG3s. I'm very grateful to the MG3 UK owners um, group on Facebook for giving me suggestions as to what to talk about with this review of this facelifted car. One of the things that I was asked about is the noise, vibration and harshness. Now the gear lever is new, the gearbox underneath I believe is the same, but it feels much more weighty and, and better quality. The car has more comfortable seats and um, although the suspension is probably the same, because of these different seats, the ride does feel a little bit better, although it is still a bit firm. It's a lot quieter in here as well. The car's fitted with stop-start, as all MG3s have been since about January 2016, and so um, that really does help, although you just get a lot less cabin noise um, in this particular car. It's still not, I'd say, up there with the best, but then again, this car costs £1,200 less in top trim than a base level Skoda Fabia. And that doesn't come with any warranty either, does it? 
The trim levels available in this new facelifted MG3 are Explore, which most people don't buy because it only has steel wheels and um, black plastic door handles, Excite and Exclusive. Very simple lineup. Same engine, same gearbox, five speed manual in all of these cars. Explore trim starts from about nine and a half thousand pounds. On a particular um, trim though, the Excite, I contacted my local MG dealer, um, which is Ripton MG in Southampton, and asked them what sort of deals they have available in that particular car. And I found out that for £99 a month, you can get a brand new MG3 1.5 Excite over a four year period with a deposit of uh, £850 and they give you £1,300 as a deposit contribution um, over a 5,000 mile limit over four years, which I think is amazing value. So this car is very cheap to run, apart from of the fuel bills perhaps. <laughs> this car will, will um, appeal to those who just want to get on with things, who don't really sort of care about the first word in automotive engineering, but really just want a car to get them around, like maybe like a second car, um, or someone who's a young driver. Although do bear in mind with the insurance groupings, compared to the previous model, they were all group four, they've now changed to group seven. With um, the exclusive trim level, which is the one we've got in this test car, you get virtually everything known to man. You get part lever upholstery, automatic headlights, you get um, this 8 inch colour touchscreen that doesn't come on the Explore trim level at all. Um, there is no sat nav, but you get Apple CarPlay, which is nice if you've got an iPhone, it's not so nice like me if you haven't got one. You also get uh, Bluetooth DAB radio, um, you get four electric windows, rear parking sensors, a reversing camera, 16-inch um, diamond cut alloy wheels, which are different from the pre-facelift cars, and uh, the daytime um, running lights are now incorporated into the headlights, which makes the car look very different. I, I don't know whether I like the new look of the car um, as much as the old one. The old car looked very distinctive, um, and also the, the boot handle was a bit easier to use with the um, old rear end. This one does look a lot more modern, but I think it's lost some of its individuality in the process. One of the things that people really like to put in a modern car is um, lots of technology features. And this car does have them. As I said, it's got Apple CarPlay as standard in this um, top trim level particularly. You've also got a USB port that's now been moved from here down to there. You've also a 12 volt socket that's been moved to there, which is a lot more convenient. The um, storage is also very good. We'll look about it a, bit, a little bit later on. And these seats are really comfortable. Um, I've driven in this car well over 200 miles, and uh, although the three facelift cars are not an uncomfortable ride at all, um, in terms of what well, the position is firm, but the seats are very comfortable, this is even more comfortable. And um, <laughs> it's when we actually notice most of all the old tech engine because everything else in the car feels so nice. You really notice that 1.5 litre engine and the lack of low down torque even more acutely. One thing that MG could possibly do is put in the 1 litre 111 horsepower engine from the MG ZS 1 litre automatic. That's a three cylinder unit, it's got a turbo. I've driven the ZS automatic and it's brilliant. Now, bearing in mind that that increases the price of a ZS by about £2,000, that would mean a car like this would be about £15,000 if they were to do that. If they dropped in a six-speed manual gearbox in there as well, you'd have one heck of a driver's car. In fact, I know somebody who's put a supercharger on a standard 1.5-litre MG3 engine and created a monster with 170 horsepower. I bet that thing shifts. Something that you notice when driving this car, apart from the, the, the new gear lever, which is lovely, um, is the fact that there's no fabric on the door cards anymore, apart from on this armrest. And you know, that's, that's okay, but it is a bit of a strange decision. I think possibly because this top spec car's got a part lever interior, they wanted to save money by just putting a little bit of leather here rather than a bit of fabric there. But it does mean um, that it's lost some of that tactility um, when you rest your arm just there. 
the fuel economy you can expect from this engine is about 42 to 43 miles per gallon. That's what I've been getting over the last 200 miles or so. It's similar to um, my Lady Wife's existing MG3, because it is the same engine after all, but this car has got stop-start, which probably helps just get that little bit more economy. Here we are with anchors tying us to what we'll call home Even if the sight of it has not yet touched our eyes and Here we are and we're together Even if we are apart and we're together and we're For a facelift this car has actually got quite a few worthwhile improvements It is a shame about this engine but apart from that it's really good Anyway, let's take a look in the boot to see if there are any changes in there as well One of the things you'll notice straight away about the facelift MG3, apart from this hello yellow bright paint, is the fact that the rear is completely different. These tail lights are new, they've got uh, LED strips in them, and the boot handle has been moved right down here. Now this is not as convenient as the previous model, but it does give a cleaner look. Inside the boot we find that it has 285 litres of space just as before, and of course a variety of nice things that I've put in there today. So inside the boot we have this uh, fine variety of uh, <coughs> merchandise related to a certain 1960s television show. Um, but if we whittle the good carpet, there's actually a compartment in here now for extra storage. Uh, the tyre repair kit is still here, but you can, I'm told by the energy press department that this is definitely true, now get a space saver spare wheel. Fantastic. Something else that owners of the pre-facelift car might notice is this is parcel shelf a different colour and the area around the parcel shelf is also a different colour. I personally prefer the white in the pre-facelift car but that's just me. Taking a seat in the back is just as easy as it was before. Uh, I am 5 foot 11, this is my driving position. I've got plenty of knee room and plenty of headroom. It's easy to fold the seats by pulling on the tag here and they do fold 60-40 as well. There are Isofix covers and this sort of part leather trim as well which was only available before on the Style Lux and Style Plus models. It's very comfortable in here and there's lots and lots of space. There's still no centre armrest, but you wouldn't expect that. The cup holder's changed in size and it's gone all square, which is weird. One thing I would say is that the door cards are completely different. These handles are different. The lack of fabric is different, although I don't know whether that's a good or bad thing. Um, and there are no more door pockets in the rear. I don't really know why they've chosen to do that, but it does look better, even though it doesn't necessarily feel better due to the lack of fabric. If we take a seat in the front of a facelifted car, you'll see that everything has been changed pretty much. Gone is the rather cheap feeling dashboard, although it was a cheap car, and it's been replaced with interesting textures and interesting colours. This 8 inch touchscreen is completely different as well, as are these um, heater controls. And thank goodness, the Hazlight switch has been moved. I'm a happy man. If I switch the car on now, you'll see that this 8 inch colour touchscreen will load up. This is fitted with Apple CarPlay, although there isn't Android Auto, which is a shame. And uh, on the top two models, this is standard. Also on this exclusive trim, you get a reversing camera, which wasn't available before. This is a revelation in terms of ease of use. It's so much easier to use than the previous system. I'll just turn that down, for, don't want any copyright infringement there. Um, even the type of monitoring system has been integrated into here, and it is really easy. If you want to go back, you just press this button, rather like on an iPhone, which kind of makes sense because this has Apple CarPlay after all. One thing um, that Mr. Murray Richardson and I did not like about this car, and most people didn't like about the previous generation, was these heater control buttons. They were uh, just a mess. These ones feel really, really nice. Um, they're logically laid out, and um, the confusion that was around there before just isn't there. They've also made the door lock buttons up to here, next to the door handle, which is a far better place for them. Other things which I didn't, particularly complain about in my previous review, such as the 
uh, switches for the electric windows and the mirror controls, those have actually been improved or moved. Um, and also we now have stop start because this is a Euro 6 compliant car and the switch for it is just down there. The gear lever as well for all cars, including press cars, because this is a press car, has actually been improved. The linkage below we think is the same, but um, it just feels a lot different. It's much more pleasant to use and it, it doesn't feel like it's going to come off in your hand. So we uh, now have my secret mission documents. Let's see if they'll go in the glove box. Oh, oh dear. Okay, so my secret mission documents don't fit in my new glove box. They would have fitted in the old one, but let's try putting them in the door bins. And yeah, that's fine, that fits nicely. So the dials are exactly the same as before. Um, there's no difference whatsoever. And I thought initially when um, the car was delivered to me this was going to be a problem because it looks a bit incongruous changing everything else apart from those but actually they do look they do look okay and um, they'd still do a nice little dial sweep which I like anyway because this is the range topping exclusive trim we have the um, air conditioning there is cruise control there are automatic lights there is the reversing camera the 8 inch touchscreen Apple CarPlay, these part leather seats, and uh, obviously these lovely um, alloy wheels which you would have seen earlier. It's very well trimmed, although for some reason, when I was driving here earlier on, the weather's been a bit sort of stormy today, I cannot get the automatic lights to work. So either I'm an idiot or this car doesn't have automatic wipers. In terms of visibility, um, it is exactly the same as before. It's um, good. We've got parking sensors and a reversing camera on this exclusive model. Um, it's easy to see out the front. These mirrors though, um, you'll notice if you watched uh, some of my earlier reviews that we've put extra mirror extenders on these because MG did not convert these from left to right hand drive and it's still a bit of a problem but you can solve that for less than five pounds so I'm not going to criticize that too much. So then, what do I think of this new facelift at MG3? Well, you can have a different colour apart from this, which is nice. And as long as you're not fussed by this rather old-fashioned technology engine, then it's a really, really good car. The price has risen considerably over the earlier one, but it's not excessively priced at all. And of course, there's the excellent seven-year warranty. I wouldn't have any hesitation in recommending this to anybody at all. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, I'm terribly sorry. Yes, that's right. And furthermore, we know that the mini computer is in the Dreisenberg Embassy even as we speak. Thank you for watching this episode of Tweed Jacket Reviews. My name is Joseph Lloyd. I'm an independent vehicle consultant. I find cars for people. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to do that. Don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. If you wish me to source a car for you, I'd love to do that. My website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. Please use the Contact Me page on my website to get in touch. I've got a Facebook page as well. It's facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you. I'm at the sound of silence.